Hi everyone. Good day. I believe that you are in an international business marketing class. Um, today, uh, I'm going to give a lecture to you on a global marketing. My name is uh, Dr. Maliga Marimutu. I'm from uh, University Science Malaysia. I hope you will have a good time with me today. Okay, this is a, this is a topic on a global marketing. A global marketing is something on learn the strategies how to get into this uh, global market. All right. So we have several things that we want to cover in today's class, which is basically we will look into uh, the global marketing today. We will see how the companies usually decide whether to go to global market or not. There's a very big decision actually the company has to make. And we'll see how the company decide which market to enter. So it's not a just a decision to go global or not, but they have to make a wise decision to decide which market actually they should enter as to ensure success in future. Um, the company also need to decide how they want to enter into the market because the mood of entering into international market is vital as well and the company also have to decide on the global marketing strategy basically what are the programs they're going to use for them to attract the customers and sustain in the business at the global level okay uh, just before I, I go in detail into this topic as to give you an overview of what is global marketing all about, I'm going to show you a very small video clip which will take about 5 minutes of your time. I hope you can pay a full attention to this video clip because most of the things that we will be discussing after this video clip will be, re will be related to the, uh, to the video clip. Alright, I'm going to take you to the video clip now. Crafts Oreo is the most popular cookie in the world, enjoyed in more than 100 countries throughout North and South America, Asia, Europe, Africa, the Middle East, and Australia. The Oreo cookie is a truly global product. It is sold in a consistent form, with very few exceptions, in all regions of the world. The Oreo cookie is universally appealing. The unique flavor translates across borders. And the sandwich cookie with the fun of a cookie and cream uh, makes Oreo a real fun eating experience. Though the Oreo brand is popular around the world, adjustments to product, packaging, and promotion are sometimes necessary to match consumer tastes and expectations in each country. In China, for example, we have a lightly sweetened version of Oreo, which has 27% less sugar. And that's really a response to consumers' desire and taste preferences for a less sweet product. Um, in the case of Venezuela, milk chocolate biscuits are more appealing to consumers than the dark, intense cocoa that we're familiar with in the U.S. and in some other markets. And so we have introduced and successfully launched a chocolate, uh, a milk chocolate version of Oreo. Packaging is a feature that can change greatly from market to market. In the U.S., the 18-ounce size of Oreo is the predominant package form. Um, and that's really because in the U.S. many consumers are more accustomed to shopping at large format stores. Um, they have large pantries at home. They tend to shop, you know, more weekly versus daily. In other countries, there's a variety of different formats, often smaller store formats, whether it's the um, kiosks in Brazil or the um, uh, self-service convenience stores in China, um, or even these street vendors in Venezuela. And so in those countries, larger packages don't make as much sense. The stores don't have the space, and consumers don't have the pantry space in their homes. Sometimes packaging adjustments are based on what consumers are familiar with. In many countries, cookies are packaged in a single row that's covered with foil, which creates a tube-like shape. So Oreos are packaged that way as well. Another packaging adjustment relates to the branding of the product itself. While the Oreo name and logo remain consistent, the company affiliation for the product sometimes changes. So the Oreo is always the brand name for the cookie product itself, um, but we often partner that with a different parent company name. So for example, in China, um, it, the brand is Kraft Oreo, um, because Kraft has become a trusted name in the, in the market in China. In Canada, consumers have a long history and affiliation with the Mr. Christie brand, um, which they associate Oreo with. So it's Christie Oreo cookies in Canada. One of the greatest challenges in global marketing 
is creating promotions. It's very important for marketers to understand cultural subtleties. Campaigns that are effective in one country might be misunderstood or lack relevance in another. Oreo's brand message is providing moments of childlike delight. Um, this is particularly evident in the twisting, licking, and dunking in milk ritual that is passed on from generation to generation. Um, historically, we portrayed that in the U.S. and in markets where it's been around for a long time as a parent or a grandparent passing that ritual on to a special child. In countries where Oreo is newly introduced, there isn't a heritage of people who have been familiar with the brand, so there isn't a brand heritage to pass down from parent to child. And so we found that it makes more sense for us to have the child introduce the ritual into the home. So that might be the child introducing twisting and licking and dunking to the parent, um, or perhaps to a sibling or a friend. The ways in which Oreos are promoted are also customized to meet each country's needs. In China, brands advertised on TV are seen as more credible and of a higher quality. So Kraft focuses a large percentage of their marketing on TV advertising in China. In a country like Venezuela, by contrast, outdoor advertising is more effective. In Venezuela, we tend to use more outdoor marketing. Because the consumers are on the go and have busy lifestyles, we tend to find one of the best places to reach them is during their drive time. So we have um, oftentimes painted the sides of buildings or have enormous billboards that are very simple, high-impact visuals of an Oreo dunking into a glass of milk. Marketing a product globally allows for huge growth potential within a brand, and understanding cultural parameters is the key to a successful campaign. Oreo is an intrinsically universal product, but understanding and focusing on the cultural differences and local differences has really helped to make Oreo the number one cookie in the world. Right, welcome back. Okay, as you can see from the video clip of Oreo, right, we can know that global marketing involves performance at a very extended level, which involves activities such as planning, pricing, promoting, advertising, and direct flow of an organization of organizations offering to more than one country. Right? And the objective here is to gain profit, basically. So this world trade is driven by many factors such as global competitions, global organizations, global consumers. Okay, let's see what are the factors usually um, help the organization to decide whether they want to go into global market or not. There are several factors here. Right? In our own country, in your country, back home in your country, if you are not from Indonesia, see, globalization is a normal, common practices. But let's ask ourselves, why these companies want to get into global market? Why don't they just do their business in the dom uh, domestic market? There are several reasons for going into global market. One could be because of the competition in the existing domestic market. Too much of competitions. I want to get into a blue oceans. I don't want to compete in a red oceans. So the companies, the organizations, the firms will decide to go into global market. Some, they may realize that although they have a very good domestic market, but the domestic market is actually shrinking. It becomes stagnant ready. So they have to go out and find a new market as to survive in future. Or maybe there are better opportunity in the foreign market, which the firms might thought that they should go and tap the opportunities. And they could be also due to the expansions of consumers to international market. So usually these are the several factors that will, in, uh, that will influence the organization whether they should go into the global market or not. Okay. Going into global market involves two related strategic decisions. Those are where to compete and how to compete. Any firms who have done the homework based on these two issues related to the decisions, they will find that they won't have much problem in going into the global market and doing their business at global market. So the first question, where to compete? Okay, there are, the world is so big. How can I identify which country I should go in? And inside the country, the populations are huge. Their populations have different backgrounds. How can I decide who are the customer that I want to target? 
So let's see how we can look into this actually. So the companies, the firms should look into the foreign sales volume. If they choose a country that they want to go in, they have to make sure that the foreign sales volume is high and there is a possibility that it will keep on increasing in future. And they have to decide also to how many countries this firm want to send their product. And what are the types of country that the firms want to market their product or services. So they have to see in terms of the geography, right? They have to see in terms of the locations, right? They have to see in terms of the income and populations of the people in that country. Will they be able to buy the products? They have to check on the lifestyle of the people. Will the people will be interested to buy the product or services? And what about the political climate? Would then actually facilitate uh, this company, this firm to go into the global market or not? So these are the several factors that the companies have to see before they go before they get into the global market of any country. On top of that, the firm also has to check on the market size. All right, but the market size will grow or not in future because I'm sure that the firm doesn't want to go into a country where the market size is not growing in future. And the cost of doing the business is the cost of the is the cost of doing the business is going to be very high? Would it increase in future? These are some this is a this is an important factors that the company should investigate. What about the competitive advantages? If the company get into a global market, will they be able to build a competitive advantages? And these competitive advantages are very important for them to sustain in the market. And what about the risk level? Going into this global market, would they be a risk? Talking about the risk, the risk can come from any aspect, from economical aspect. Let's, at, uh, let's take a look at the tax, right? the rules and regulations, the currency differences, okay, the political based risk. So there are so many risks from economy, from politics, from social has to be taken into consideration to figure out whether this is a good place to expand or not. All right. So, doing analysis on these factors basically will tell the company where they can go and expand globally, which is the right location, which is the right country for them to expand the business. Okay, they can ensure whether if they invested in this country, they can sustain, they can grow in the future or not. So, once that decision has been made, right, when the company has figured out which country they want to go in, the next question is, how do they want to go? How do they want to get there? All right. There are several modes of entry into the foreign market, such as exporting, licensing, joint venture, direct investment. So amongst it, we know that exporting doesn't involve a very high risk. Right? It doesn't involve a very high investment because you will be involving in a direct and indirect exporting from your country. The second one is licensing. Right? In licensing, you will go more steady with your, uh, with your global marketing. Then the next one is joint venture, where you try to combine, merged with another partner in that particular country. So this will help you to, to deal at this international market easily, but it does involve some risk as well. The next stage is direct investment. So direct investment is something that have a very high risk, but at the same time, if everything is planned very well, it can ensure to make a very good return to the business. So any business that think that there are a lot of opportunities, there are a lot of competitive advantages they can build if they go for direct investment, then the company can consider going for direct investment. But if they are not very clear of uh, the, the situations of doing business in that country, they are not very sure of the demand that they can expect from that country. They are not very sure about the support the government can give. Perhaps they should start with the simple level first, such as exporting, licensing or joint venture, rather than directly go for indirect, uh, rather than directly going for direct investment. So this global marketing strategy is basically the art of global marketing is to standardize marketing strategies whenever possible or customize them whenever necessary.
that means that if we want to become a player at the global level we should know when we want to standardize our marketing strategy and if necessary when we should customize our marketing strategies this is really very important for us to know so in term of the global marketing strategy there are several things that we need to do in order to craft the global marketing such as we have to be very careful with the market segment here and let's say we have two category of customers one is consumer the other one is industrial buyers now the question is how are we going to understand our consumer okay how are we going to conduct some analysis okay, to segment this consumer we can do it through several way such as socio economics behavioral or psychographic talking about the socio economics we can look at the demographic of the population what about the age what about the gender what about the income are these factors are going to influence our consumers decisions in purchasing purchasing the product how about the geographic locations the differences between urban and uh, rural area is there a city or metropolitan city there are these locations is going to influence the decision making process of our consumers do we have to take this into consideration so we need to do the analysis to understand our customer better what about the behavior the benefit sought from using the product or services what about the usage rate would the customer need to come back to buy the product or services again and again or they will just buy once in a life that's it they will be off what about the psychographic the lifestyle what kind of lifestyle the people in that country have would that would their lifestyle favor their decision making to purchase our product what about the attitude what kind of attitude they have do we need to change their attitude i give you an example okay we know that people in china they likes to drink tea and it was not very easy to introduce coffee to them when in the beginning coffee was trying to introduce to them the people doesn't want to drink the coffee because for uh, for traditions for ages they have been drinking tea then the the, the market has thought that maybe we have to change the way how we want to offer introduce uh, coffee into china market rather than bring the coffee as a coffee they brought the coffee as three in one coffee so when they brought the coffee three in one coffee into china market and they talk about how easy it is to prepare this three in one coffee which you just have to tear the pack and then just pour it and then uh, pour hot wa- wa- water and then you can stir it and you can have a coffee ready and this and the fragrance the smell of the coffee was so nice so when this china people look at it they they became attracted to the method of preparing the hot drinks and the smell the nice fragrance of this coffee that attracted them so they want to give a try to the coffee so the three in one coffee educate the people in china on how to taste how to drink coffee and slowly coffee managed to get into china market as a coffee and today Chai, coffee is doing very well in china market so this could be done successfully because the marketers understand how they could change the attitude the perception of the consumers in a country and talking about this industrial bias right it says if we want to market our product or services to industrial bias we have to do the similar homework we have to understand the market segment we have to conduct some analysis in term of the socio economy and behavioral here we need to check on the firm size how big is the firm size what will be their capability in buying our product and then we need to check on the geographic locations also are they strategically located for us to deliver our products to them and what about their purchasing goal why are they purchasing from us what they want to do with our product and what are the benefits they can sort by purchasing our product So these are several things that we have to be very clear before we go and approach our consumer either uh, consume uh, either individual customers or business customers here. 
And as you can see from the case study just now, it's on Oreo, you can see that they have discussed many things. It's not just a matter of introducing Oreo into global market. We have to see how people might be ready to accept this product. All right? As a product itself, or we have to look at the advertising strategies. What kind of advertising strategies that we want to use? Can we use the same advertising strategies that we have been using in one country to promote our product in another country? As you can see, in some countries, for Oreo, children have to play the role to introduce these biscuits, these cookies, to elder people. All right? So, this is something that we really have to understand because we have to know that although we are trying to do our business in a global level, but every country, they have different culture, different practices. Before us, there are many more other products that enter into their country. So they have more knowledge, better knowledge about all the other products compared to the products that we want to newly market into their market. So we have to bear in our mind that we have to do quite a number of uh, homeworks, uh, efforts have to be done in order to uh, introduce our product in that market. So these involve pricing strategy, advertising strategies, right? uh, the modifications of product, so there are a lot of things that we have to do and our next uh, several slides will discuss all this in detail. It's about uh, how we are going to modify our marketing mix uh, in offering our product and services in the global market. You see, we're talking about this, our, our product going into the global market. There's something that we have to decide. How do we want our product to get into global market? Do we want to take the exact product that we are offering in our domestic market to offer in the global market. So we address this as offering extension, where we don't do any changes to the product. We just take the product that we are offering in local market and then just send it over to global market. Or do you think that you need to do some modifications to the product? You see, if you take for example, this automobile, this car industry, the driver's seat in Eastern countries and in Western countries, it's not the same. There's, we have driving seat on the right, uh, on the right hand, and there are countries where the driver's seat are on the left hand. So they have to modify it. And if you look at the accessories of the cars, in some countries we don't have seasons, four seasons, so we don't have a winter, so we don't need a heater. But in certain countries they have four seasons, so they need aircon and as well as heater. So the car need to have a heater. And what about the size of the car, the space or the space inside the car? In some countries, the drivers are in small size because the people in that country are smaller size. Whereas in some countries, the people are quite tall, are quite big size. So they need more space inside the car. So in these cases, they have to modify the car. So the car can be fit to get into different global markets. So this is what we call offering adaptations where modification has to be done to the product or services that we are going to offer into the global market. And the next one is where you have to do a very big changes to the product that you want to offer until it becomes a new, completely new offering. You don't offer that in your domestic market, but you got to offer that in the global market. So this is what we call offering invention. So this is something that we have to figure out in the beginning. We don't want to uh, sell whatever what we have to the customer. We want to understand the customer. We must know what actually the customer wants. What is the needs? What is the wants? Or what is the desires of the customer? If we know this very well, then we can we can tally the product that we want to offer to the global market. The next is on the marketing channel. We have to think about the marketing channel. Which marketing channel do we want to use in introducing our product in the global market? Can we use the marketing channel that we are using in our country at the domestic market? Can we use the marketing channel that we have used in country A to market the same product in country B? Do we need to modify the marketing channel? So this is something else that we have to see. Another thing is the pricing strategies. What are the pricing strategies that we want to use here? We will end up having different pricing strategies when we want to offer our product in different countries. This is because the, the factors that involve in influencing the pricing strategies are differ across the country. Talking about some countries, it involves tax, 
high exchange rate, political matters, legal constraints, which can increase the cost. So for that reason, the, the cost of the final finished product might be higher. In some countries, we can get a lot of subsidies from the government. So when we are getting a lot of subsidies from the government, the price of the product can be cheaper. In some countries, we have to spend a lot of money in advertising. Without advertising, we will not be able to push our product into the market. So this can increase the cost. Whereas in some country, we don't have to spend a lot of money on the advertising. And the, more, and the type of advertising that we are going to choose also might not be very expensive. So we can offer our product at a lower price. So we have to figure out this. What are the pricing strategy would suit for me to market this product in the global market? And we have to check on the competitor pricing as well. At what price the competitors are offering their product? Do we have to go based on competitor pricing strategy? Or do we have to go based on the cost pricing strategy? Or maybe due to the uniqueness of the product, do we want to go based on the value-based pricing strategy? Right? So, something that we really have to think about before we get into this global marketing. Another thing, as you have uh, noticed uh, from the video clip just now, on the brand name. See, when Oreo is going into different country, they got to change their brand name. So, this is something that we have to think also. Although our product is going into many countries, we have this global brand. How do we want to market our brand in that particular country? So, something that we have to be really clear in order to in order to push our product into the global market so if you see talking about this global marketing strategy this marketing mix are very important we need to look at the product price place and promotions we have to modify it we need to revise it so as to make sure that it's suit to go into different different market we don't have a, a standard guidelines but we always try to go for standardizations because standardization can help to save a lot of time a lot of cost for us but we cannot always push for standardization as i mentioned just now if required we have to go for customizations as well then only we can make sure that our product our services fit that uh, fit for that particular market here and if you look at the diagram that I shows in on the international marketing task here, you can see that we have three layers of color here. All right? What this diagram is trying to explain to you is um, when you want to get into the global market, you have to really understand the environmental factors that would influence your company, your firm. All right? Talking about these environmental factors, it can be political, culture geography, infrastructure, structure of distribution, level of technology, competitive forces, economic forces, foreign environments, climates. These factors can influence your business at the international market. So we need to see among these factors. What are the factors are basically favoring us? What are the factors are basically becomes our opportunities? And what are the factors can become threat for us. So if we could really understand this, this environmental factors, how it would impact the way how we are going to do the business at the global level, we will be able to know how we can actually manage all these factors. Whichever become an opportunities, we will definitely grab the opportunities. Whichever we think are the threats, we will think of a plan, contingency plan as well, on how to overcome this that how to minimize its impact on our business. We can do this based on the strength that we have for, uh, for us to tap the opportunities in this global market. And coming back to this um, marketing mix, right? we have to see how we can actually optimize the marketing mix which involve product, price, place and promotions so that we can come up with a global strategy which is basically the strategy that can help to drive our product into the global market. If this has been planned very well, right? if this has been planned very well, then we will not have a problem at all in addressing our two uh, major issues here on uh, 
which country do we want to enter and how do we want to get into this country. So if we are very clear on which country we want to go and we are very clear on the mode of entry as well as the market global marketing uh, mix strategies then we will, I'm sure we will not have a problem in getting into the global market. And another thing is from time to time we have to revise our strategy because we have to know that we are not the only person who are actually doing business over there. We do have a lot of competitors and these competitors are always coming up with new strategies and at the same time the technology also are growing at a very very fast very speed levels so we have to keep a very close eye on these things so whatever strategies new strategies that our competitors are doing we have to see how the strategies are going to impact the way how we are doing the business uh, to what extent the, the technologies are growing we have to say that would that impact our business as well? Do we require to make any new adjustment to the way that we are doing our business or not? So if from time to time we are very clear uh, and we are very alert on the way that how we are doing this business at the global market, then we will be definitely sustained in the global market. We will be able to gain more profit in the global market and we can try to be a market leader okay, based on our objective uh, in the global market. So I think that marks my, uh, the end of my presentation today. I hope that you have learned quite a lot of things from these uh, sessions. Uh, I hope the objective, the learning objective of this session has been achieved where you know the, what are the factors that a company has to look into before going into the global market based on what, uh, based on what criteria the company can decide whether uh, on which global market they want to go, how they want to go into the global market, how they can modify the uh, the marketing mix strategies as to they as for them to get into the global market. So as an exercise for you, as to make sure that you you get chance to to ut to utilize to what you have learned from today's class, I would encourage you. Uh, to identify a business that is actually been expanded to global market from your own country. Look at that business. Say to what country this business has been expanded. If currently they are in the domestic market, to what are the other countries they have ventured in? See the similarities and differences in those countries. And then Try to find uh, some justification why that particular firm, the company, decided to choose those countries for their global expansion. What are the factors that they found that could favor them and figure out how these companies have been doing in that global market. So you can tell here whether they have made the wise decisions or not for going into that global market. And next, check on the mode of entry. What are the mode of entry did they choose? Sometimes talking about this mode of entry, you can even see that uh, some of the mode of entry change over the period of time. In the beginning, they might have choose just exporting. But later, they, may, uh, they might have gone to the stage of uh, uh, joint venturing or direct investment. So check on the mode of strategy, mode of entry and see how this mode of entry actually facilitate their growth in that global market. And next, look at the global marketing strategy that they have choose. What are the things that, how do they manage their product, their price, their place and their promotions in going into the global market. Okay, I believe that if you can do that assignment, then you will have a very good understanding on what we have discussed in our session today. So with that, I end the session for today. And uh, I wish you good luck. I hope you have a very good time uh, with your education here at the University of uh, Binos. And all the best for your future. Thank you for having me with you today. Bye.